Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I've got a great guest on today. Uh, he used to go by this, uh, the name Turd Ferguson, but this is Craig Emke today. Craig, how are you doing? Ninja, my man. It's good to see you. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. So this is the first time me and Craig have gotten to speak uh, in person or actually meet ever. I followed Craig for years and years. When I started my Precious Metals journey back in 2010, I was looking for all the content I could. And I don't remember, you were around in 2010 on YouTube, weren't you? Yeah, I was actually my site started in uh, November of 2010. Wow. So, yeah, I, I, I got involved in Zero Hedge back when it was still a Blogspot site. That is so awesome. Yeah. So between you, Zero Hedge and David Morgan, uh, I got a ton of my early uh, knowledge about the precious metals market from you guys. So I thank you so much for that. Well, I'm, I'm well, look at you now. You used to have probably brown or black hair. And <laughs> Look what it's done to you. It's just all gray. I'm like, where am I going? Where am I coming sorry, from? Dude. <laughs> it's all good, man. I tell people one year in the metals is like seven years of actual life. It'll wipe you out fast. It's uh, especially the last couple of years, but things are starting to look better. So oh, we'll see what happens. Well, and I've got the total opposite. I have the, the slow moving metals market, and then I've got the pay, fast paced cryptos market that I've been in forever. Oh, so yeah. I've got, I'm the yin, it's my yin and yang. So <laughs> I wanted to have you on for a couple of reasons. First off, you're coming to the Ninja event in yeah. March, on March 5th right absolutely super pumped about that i know you're it's so like you're flying in and flying out because you got a super busy schedule but i thank you so much for coming and speaking and uh can't wait to see what you're going to talk about but uh i know we wanted to talk about the the actual uh metals market right now because things are starting to get a little interesting that metals still haven't really moved but gold is bumping 1900 right now so yeah. what's your take on everything well in, in the very short term um, history and experience is taught, you know, moves based on geopolitics don't usually stick, right? You get, uh, I mean, you can go back and think, I like when, remember two years ago, the U.S. whacked that Soleimani guy and it's like, yes. oh my God, now there's going to be a war in the Middle East and everything price shot up. And then there was no war in the Middle East and price right went right back down. Yeah. And that's generally how it works. You know, whether or not that's what happens this time, I'm a little more in the camp. I've been studying this uh, Ukraine situation since the Maidan revolution eight years ago. This is more serious than people think. This isn't just Biden trying to score political points. This is the, the relationship between Ukraine and Russia goes back centuries. In fact, Ukraine used to be a Russian or a Soviet Union state. Yes. Okay, yeah. So this, this is a legitimate thing that's going on there. Um, I'll share one thing with you that's that's interesting. Um, Putin, you know, is KGB, used yeah. to be KGB. Gary Kasparov famously said, there are no coincidences when you're dealing with the KGB, right? <laughs> um, there is a long history of Putin uh, recognizing, or you want to say commemorating anniversaries. Mm -hmm. um, one of my, one of the most, I guess, not notorious events uh, in that regard was there was a guy by the name of Nemtsov, who was uh, a big Putin critic who got whacked walking across the bridge across from Red Square on February 27th of 2015. It was a big deal. This, I mean, he was openly assassinated, right? Okay. Walking down the street. The guy everybody thought did that to him was a, a dude by the name of Garamayev. And, but he was never prosecuted, was never anything. And actually five years later to the day, uh, this Garamayev got the Russian order of merit from Putin himself. Wow. Actually, these anniversaries are symbolic. And yes. seeming importance. Well, a Monday, this coming Monday, the 14th, is the, the day the, the Ukrainians commemorate as an anniversary of the Maidan revolution that kicked out Viktor Yanukovych and started this whole thing eight years ago. Wow, that's amazing. So, well, let's keep track on Monday and Tuesday next week. Get past there, maybe this stuff will calm down. Well, you know what blows me away? Now, you said the 14th. Are you referring to the 20th? Which date was it? It was, it was, it was uh, February 21st, 2014. Got 21st. Okay, gotcha. I heard you wrong. So Monday, this coming Monday is the eight year anniversary that the Ukrainians celebrate. So wow. uh, I suspect this will calm down. I pray it does. But yeah. uh, let's get through Monday and Tuesday of next week before uh, we you know, we start getting. But anyway, even if that doesn't, even yeah. if that war premium, it, it will probably come out. The banks are certainly adding contracts of open interest to Comex Gold as if they're expecting it to come out. So yeah. they can profit on the way back down. But regardless of all that, the macro situation for the metals is pretty good this year. You know, we didn't do anything last year um, because everybody believed this transitory nonsense. Inflation was transitory. Negative real rates were transitory. 
And now it's getting, it's, people are figuring out that one, is it not only transitory, but two, the Fed will never be able to raise the Fed funds rate and get it above the rate of inflation. So inflation. You've, you've just given me so many questions to ask you and now I've got a perfect <laughs> section. So Sorry, first, I, I, I had too much coffee. No, that's I haven't had enough. I haven't had one drop yet, and everyone knows I love coffee. So, so a couple of things. Okay, R- countries like Russia and China play the long game, and and I'm glad you brought up anniversaries because they're very serious to com- countries that think long term. Right? They know a lot of history. They know a lot of the future, and it seems like we're just sort of stumbling over things lately in the last year or so. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Crimea, when they took Crimea, um, the biggest deal there was it was their only warm water port. Right. And 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 now people are like, there's no way they're going to take it. And I'm like, there right. is. Because, gonna, yeah. Yeah. Russia has to be able to move its military or it's going to die. And, right. and that would have cut them off for a certain part of the year if they didn't have that port for their Navy. Right. Now, we're talking about we've seen the famous pictures of, of Putin holding gold. We've seen the, the banners in China or, you know together we'll be great if we all own gold you know we've seen these two countries these two superpowers advocate gold and yet the west is just pissing on it like just throwing it away it seems like i tend to believe that i'm watching these world superpowers as they're getting even larger and now they're combining their forces with their new you know variations of swift and so on um what do you think that is you're right because there's there's transitory crap in the in j powell's speech what we really have is transitory hyperinflation, I call it, like what we saw in lumber last year and now this year. Um, but I believe that's going to get even worse. What do you think that we're going to start seeing with these other countries? Because they seem to be getting away from the dollar. They're doing deals in euros and all kinds of other different currencies. Right. The, the Russians and the Chinese just announced that a couple of weeks ago, right? They're going to uh, trade uh, energy, but they're going to do it in euros. Uh, the U.S. has said, thank goodness, actually, that they're not going to try to not get involved militarily if something happens in Ukraine. But what will they do? They'll sanction Russia. They'll try to kick them out of the SWIFT system, that kind of thing. Well, Russians aren't just going to sit there and go, OK, we're out of SWIFT, darn it. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble now. They're going to work around it, right? Yeah. As anybody would. They look at that being bullied yeah. in some regard. And, and so ultimately what it does is in, in that long game picture is it drives people away from using the dollar, right? Yeah. And so as there's less demand for dollars, as other structures, other systems are set up to bypass SWIFT, bypass use of the dollar, then that lessens demand for dollars. Well, and again, Econ 101, you're increasing supply while dropping demand. That means the value or the price goes down. Yes. And so yeah. this is very bad for the dollar long term. And as the dollar devalues and depreciates, like what we've seen the last 18 months with, you know, whatever, 8 trillion new ones printed or whatever it is, yeah. you get inflation. That's just how it works. Yeah. And so, again, in the short term, hey, look at us. We're tough. We're kicking you out of SWIFT, you know, and doing whatever. Yeah. Long term, it's, it's very bearish for the dollar and very bearish for the dollar as a reserve currency. Yeah. So now uh, one other thing that I think about as you're talking is we are seeing a huge blow up in the real estate bubble. It's been all over the news for for years. And I don't know what your background is in real estate, but what's really interesting to me right now is we're seeing a divergence from the Fed funds rate, which has done nothing. They're just, they're threatening to raise it, but we've seen 30 year mortgages go from 3% first week of December to four and a half percent as of right now. I, in my history of what, 21, 22 years of investing in real estate, I've never seen the 30-year mortgage go up that high, that fast on a percentage basis. Yeah. Um, people think that they, they go, well, the Fed can't raise rates, but we're watching the banks raise the mortgage rates. And I keep telling people that the banks are, I think the banks are afraid. They don't think that this housing bubble is going to keep going. In your opinion, um, you know, the last time we saw the housing bubble pop in 2007, well, 2006 to 2008, we saw metals start to come down. We saw the stock market coming down because that wealth effect was destroyed. Metals bottomed first and then started their multi-year bull run, you know, into 2010, 2011. What is your take now? Because people keep going, you know, gold and silver, they're antiquated. They're not doing anything, but I don't remember them doing a whole lot before the Great Recession, and I don't remember them doing a whole lot in 1979, 1980, right before the, I mean, they were trending up both times, but then that blow off top didn't come until something really bad happened. Hmm. Well, th- those are interesting points. I, you know, and gold was rallying through the late 70s in a stagflationary environment, even though rates were going up, 
they weren't keeping up with inflation and gold went from $100 and 76 to almost $900. True. They were they were going up, trending up in the late 70s. But it wasn't that because I think everyone, especially with crypto, they're expecting something crazy, like something to just blow yeah. off. And that's yeah. why they're frustrated with gold and silver. It's like yeah, and that's, they're doing exactly. well. And that, and that gets frustrating because that's not how it works. It's like, you know, you used to buy a stock. I, my background, I was a stockbroker when I first got into this industry 30 years ago. You'd buy a stock. If it went up 10 percent in a year, you were thrilled. Right. Yes. And yeah. now if you can go up 10 percent in a day, it's a dog. You, <laughs> You're you know, right. And, and that's where, again, the crypto, I mean, I'm, I own Bitcoin and I'm glad I do as, you know, as part of a diversification, diversification out of dollars, but totally. you can't conflate one with the other. Yeah. I, you know, and I'll tell you one thing about crypto, it's being where it's not keeping up at present, you know, with usually it tracks hash rates and all that kind of stuff. And after having, all of a sudden it's not. And I wonder how much that has to do with the financialization of it. You know, now we've got futures and 100 percent. It has to do with that. I mean, there's it's so tied now to the to Wall Street. It's crazy because of right. all the derivatives. Right. And that's what they've done to gold. Yep. You know, if, if you if you kept trading Bitcoin just off the let's call it physical Bitcoin. Yep. Then you could track it and the halvings and all that kind of stuff the way it always did up until about last year. Uh, the same thing is with gold. Gold has been so financialized. There's so many fake forms of gold, mm -hmm. whether it's COMEX contracts or unallocated accounts or ETFs, uh, promissory notes, all this kind of stuff. You've got maybe a hundred different ounces of all this pretend crap, yeah. every one ounce of actual gold that's out there. Yeah. And so that's where that's all part of why gold hasn't kept up. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, at the in the end, though, none of these things, as you mentioned, the financial crisis of 2007, those plates will spin and they'll spin faster and faster to the point where it's just unsustainable. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, let's talk about um, premiums and things like that, because in, in my you know what, since 2010, my experience in precious metals, I have never seen such a long sustained time of high premiums and delays in shipping. So let's talk about that because people talk about the silver gold ratio, but they never pay attention to the physical silver to gold ratio. Like if you priced a physical silver eagle compared to a gold eagle, it's a totally different story. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's ways you can kind of get around that, but you know, that's definitely the premiums are a sign of a shortage of metal. Now, whether that's due to, you know, supply chain issues or, you know, whatever, um, I, there's no doubt. I mean, you think of the Wall Street silver campaign and everybody, you know, making a run and all the uh, the bullion dealers about a year ago at this time. Yep. I mean, that re I know, you know, some key players and some of the major online bullion dealers, they're like, man, that set us back for at least six months yeah. trying to secure the metal, you know, and, and uh, the, the mints and the foundries and the refineries and everybody else were having trouble keeping up. And that's all part of why these premiums expand. Yeah. That they're still high tells you a lot. Uh, that it's still a problem. And, you know, and we're still even, even like yesterday, I saw a report, China's gold imports from Switzerland were the highest last month since 2016. Okay, so there's still the actual physical metal demand can, is really straining the system. Yeah. And, and it, if we ever want to get it unwound, unwind that financialization we were talking about earlier, it's got to be through physical demand where we almost create kind of a bank run. Do you, do you know, um, by any chance, when those numbers come out about China buying from Switzerland, what currency they're using? Are they using U.S. dollars? I don't know if they convert their, if they just take their dollar reserves and buy it, or if they just use their yuan and buy it. I don't, I'm not sure. Because if they um, are doing that, that it, could be catastrophic in the long term for the dollar. Yeah, I would think they're probably using their foreign currency reserves to do it. When, yeah. it, when China themselves, then the People's Bank of China is doing it. But a lot of that demand, that influx demand is actually retail demand. Yeah, you know, the actual people themselves or jewelers, that sort of thing that are that they need the metal. And so it's coming in uh, and again, usually through Switzerland. When what happens is if it's coming through Switzerland, then it means it's probably originating in London. And those are, you know, the 400 ounce big bricks that you see. Yeah, those, that's not the Asian standard. The Asian standard is a kilo bar, which is more about like this size. Okay. And so the, those. Those 400 ounce bars go to Switzerland. They get re-refined and recast into kilo bars, and they get shipped to Asia. Well, that's a one-way boat, man. They, they don't. It's not like then they, you know, at some point they're going to take those kilo bars and ship them back over to London and or back to Switzerland, turn them back into 400 ounce bars and send them back to London. That's crazy. So it's a constant drain of that West inventory. You mentioned again, the West just doesn't care. Yeah. All they worry about is their fiat currency and keeping that system going as long as possible. And then eventually the, they're going to have to pay the, pay the piper we all will.
you know, sort of a funny side story, um, but it has to do with this, you know, China and India, uh, they really value real wealth. And you can see mm-hmm. in Indians, they wear their wealth. I went out a, long, a while back, a bunch of my buddies were getting into watches and they're buying these, um, I don't even remember the names of them. But, you know, they got pictures of John Travolta on a P51, you know, look at me. And it's yeah. a piece of stainless steel. And I decided that I wanted to go and spend some money. They're spending like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. I went to some pawn shops and I found out that the, the, the old Seikos, the ones that were made out of 14 karat gold, some yeah. out of 18 karat gold, they're actually considered junk. When pawn shops take them in, they immediately have them melted. And they're these solid gold, you know, yeah. chunk. Yeah. And so I bought it for spot price. And it's funny. I've got this gold watch that I wear every once in a while when my buddies go play golf or something. And they're wearing these $15,000, you know, just pieces of stainless steel, but it's a name brand. And they just sit there and stare. And it's just funny because I spent the light least out of them and I have something of real tangible value. Right. Right. They're, they just right. own marketing, but that's, that's America's story right now. We're all about yeah. fluff. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That is a very good uh, analogy or metaphor. Uh, no doubt about it. You've got something tangible and real. Sometimes you know what you ought to do. Uh, I enjoy doing this is uh, you can take a one ounce gold coin and and just take one up to the golf course. Use it as your ball marker so you can keep good track of it. Oh. You know, $2,000 laying around. But then flip it to somebody and let them hold it. Yes. You know, because all the gold's ever been mined is still out there. It doesn't get destroyed. It gets maybe yeah. lost. So you could be holding something that was around, first of all, it could, you know, something that was around in Roman times, who knows? But then additionally, when you hold it, because it's so dense and heavy, yeah. heavier than you'd expect, you have a feeling that it's something substantial. You go, yeah. Oh, I, I get that all the time with silver. We, I, we give two coins and we say, Hey, just cling them together. And you can see the look on people's face. Like it doesn't feel real or normal or, and I'm all yeah. because it's real and you're used to something that's fake. Yeah. You know, that's what blows me away. Well, hey, in closing, can we talk about the TF Metals report? Because I've it's been so long since I've heard you talk about it. What do you do at TF Metals? Well, I I appreciate that. This. uh, Yeah, we've been this has been 12 years of my life, I guess. And it's 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 not like a normal trading site. I mean, some of what I do, I, I call it manipulation analysis. We keep track of what the banks are doing. The banks are the ones that have financialized gold. They're the ones that have a monopoly on the pricing system. So you got to kind of pay attention to what they're doing. And that gives you some idea of where gold might run into resistance and where it might find support and that kind of thing. So some people use it for trading, but really it's just an online community where we're preparing for what we call the end of the great Keynesian experiment, that this monetary, this debt-based monetary system just isn't going to go on forever. And so it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican or from what country you come from. We got people from around the world. We're all in the same boat economically. Yep. So we all try to help each other out. And so the site is a little bit about what I do, but it's a lot about what everybody else does. It's $15 a month. So it's not like it's, you know, a deal breaker. It's like probably what you pay for your newspaper online. In yep. some um, but I think the information we provide is valuable. I tell people I'm kind of their eyes and ears. I got to sit there and keep track of this crap all day long. Yeah. So you go live your life and then you come back for a podcast the end of the day and I'll tell you what happened. And, you know, if there's anything that you got to do something about. So uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm very proud of the site. I just feel like the luckiest guy in the world that I get to run it. And um, again, it's just right there, tfmetalsreport.com. Well, cool. And I know you didn't know that I was going to ask about it, but uh, I, I really do like your work. I've really enjoyed it. I've learned a lot from you and I love your commentary. It's it's hard not uh, talking to you as turd anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, even my mom, before she passed away, she would call me turd every once in a while. So and all my friends call me ninja all the time too. Now I'm like, right. oh, you know my name, like, yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. On. And on my site, you know, everybody's got to pick a name still. You, you know, when you sign up for an online site, you always pick some anonymous username, right? Oh, I didn't know but, that. That's cool. Yeah. So on my side, that's what TF is for. I still go by TF or Turd Ferguson. Nice. Uh, out here in public, I got to go ahead and call myself Craig. So whatever. Hey, no worries. I, I, I can't wait to shake your hand and, and see you speak at fun. the event. So thank you so much, guys. We're going to have a link to that in, in the comments section below. Again, Craig, have a great day. Hey, thank you, Ninja. We'll see you in a couple weeks. No worries. And with that being said, guys, the Economic Ninja is out.